Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Imaginings. I have what may end up being a surprising video for many of the people in my audience. And if it surprises you, great. And I'll get to the details behind that here shortly. Uh, before I get into the details of G.I. Joe role-playing game and the Essence 20 game system, uh, I just wanted to mention that part of the reason why I'm making this video is because I had a rough week um, and my friend, uh, my best friend who lives in Colorado, I live in Nebraska, drove in from Colorado um, eight hours to see me in Nebraska because he knew that I had a really rough week um, and had a, a rough circumstance happen on Wednesday of this week. And so he came out to be with me. And so it's awesome to have friends of that caliber, of course. Uh, he had, prior to this week, found a copy of Holmes Edition of Dungeons and Dragons. This is uh, the 1979 third printing of this. And many of you who have followed the channel know that I've been diving into stuff from the basic era recently. And so, you know, it's a little bit beat up. Um, of course, I just want to read it. And uh, so I just wanted to showcase that because this is the earliest edition of any Dungeons and Dragons I've ever owned at all. That is an authentic copy. This is not POD. This is an actual copy that was printed back in 1979. So I just wanted to show that to everybody in the audience. And, and that's a good show off, I think, as well, because... Dungeons and Dragons started as a D20 system. And anybody who knows me as a role player knows that I have always hated D20 dice systems. Most D20 dice systems have been based upon this idea that you roll a D20 and you add some sort of modifier to it based upon, you know, something related to your attributes or your skills or something like that. Uh, I love what Renegade Game Studios has done with the Essence 20 mechanic system. Because it makes significant changes to the D20, use of D20 dice that I think solves for me a lot of the problems that I have with the D20 system and why I don't like playing with it as a mechanic system. And I'll give you just a couple examples in this video, and then I think I'm going to do another video in which I'll do a deep dive on it. But uh, both my buddy DJ and I had bought the G.I. Joe role-playing game largely because the art in it is excellent. And for nostalgia purposes, we had both watched the G.I. Joe cartoon in the 80s, and he had followed the comics a lot. And I like doing things with DJ, <laughs> okay? G.I. Joe would not have been my first personal choice, but if DJ is doing it, I'm all in. Okay. And so what I did is I had bought the core rule book, uh, months ago, what months ago, weeks and weeks ago, I, I bought the core rule book in about mid June. So weeks ago. Okay. And uh, I had been enjoy reading the lore in it. I enjoyed the art but I will be honest with you, I did not really take much of a look at the mechanic system because I think like a lot of people in this audience, and I can be just as guilty of it as other people, because I dismissed it out of hand. Okay? Now, why would we do this? You know, I this is where I think assumptions and preconceptions can get us into trouble in any hobby or any uh, profession and our lesson should always be to try to keep an open mind with things. Now you're going to think about essence 20, whatever you think about it. Personally, I love it. I'm a little shocked that I love it, but I'm also a little ashamed that I didn't give it a chance right out of the gate. Because as I said, it fixes a lot of those issues that I have with many D20 systems. So before I get into what I like about this, after I had that rough week this week and I learned that DJ was going to come up to visit me on this weekend, I told him, hey, had a rough week. I'm going to run G.I. Joe for you. Actually, I asked him what he wanted me to run and he selected G.I. Joe. That's how it actually happened. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Um, DJ's coming, driving nine hours to see me. I'm going to learn the G.I. Joe role playing game system and we're going to do a short little one on one RP session. Okay, so in preparation for that, I purchased the screen 
And the screen costs, it, it, it's an expensive product, I think, compared to many others. But I think that you are also getting quality with the product. And you get this adventure, okay, Emerald Obliette. And this is a full-featured uh, scenario. And reading an Essence 20 game... You know how you'll read some role-playing games and there'll be a lot of text and it'll be a standard scenario length and there'll be some role-playing games where it'll be a lot of text but there's a lot of role-playing and other scenes that will be inserted into that. G.I. Joe role-playing game strikes me as this. This book is full color and it's 48 pages long but if 48 pages seems slim to you, there is a lot of scenario here. Like I estimate that this would probably take between two to four game sessions to play depending upon the style of group that you have so you get this cool scenario with it okay and it follows of course all the typical gi joe tropes uh and the screen is really high quality and it is also on the uh side of a more useful screen in my opinion and I'm not going to dive into the other side of the screen in this video because I think I'm probably going to talk about the mechanics of this game in a lot more detail in a future video but if we just look at the outer panels of course uh, Renegade Game Studios got access to a lot of established Hasbro art for G.I. Joe and so that means that you get really good art in their products and so there's one panel and then there's this middle panel spread and then this other panel and you know I, it's obviously not going to last across the entire uh, frame here, but just to give you an idea of the scope of what's going on the screen uh, with the screen, this is a really sturdy screen too. So for thirty dollars, it's a little bit more on the high end for a screen product, or maybe the mid range. I don't know for a screen product, but I think that the value that you're getting in this is pretty good. Now, the folder that you see in front of you is the folder that was offered as a part of Free RPG Day this year, uh, in the United States, at least. And so, uh, with the folder, you get an Essence 20 role-playing system scenario that works for three games. Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Power Rangers, and these are all powered by the Essence 20 system. This is the scenario that we elected to start, and it went really well. You know, I put the effort in like any game master does at the beginning to like, you know, write a little bit of an introduction. I included some of the main Joes in with my buddy's character. Uh, DJ and I built characters together in advance of our little RP session, and then we did a short little session that we're planning to continue over Zoom or some other platform. Uh, you know, you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck do Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Power Rangers have in common? Well, in terms of the style of tropes in the stories that they tell, they're really not all that different, okay? There's a threat, and somebody's dealing with a threat. So it, it may seem silly that you'd have an a generalist adventure that is compatible with three scenarios, but it totally works, okay? What I want to do in the remainder of this video, because I don't want this introductory video to be too long, is I'm going to show you the character that I created for the Essence 20 system, tell you a little bit about how the system works, and what I particularly like about it compared to other D20 systems, and then we'll get a little, little bit more granular as we go along, okay? And so I'm going to bust out my newest Pentel Sharp Carry for pointing purposes, okay? Uh, this is orange, this is a limited edition uh, which came out uh, a while ago and uh, some foolish individual elected to sell this for a rock bottom price recently and I snagged one. So that was pretty awesome. So I'm gonna use this as my pointing tool for the Essence 20 system. So. The Essence 20 system is combining a lot of what I like about modern role-playing games and with still using the 20-sided dice. And you'll notice here for the front of the character sheet, there is a heavy skill-based emphasis for this game. Now, to be fair, skills are not the only thing that you would use to accomplish whatever your goals are in the role-playing game. And we'll talk about this in a second. But... 
The key things to know for the Essence 20 system is that you have four main ability scores. They're called Essences in the Essence 20 system. And these scores, not only do you build from a pool of points at the beginning, but these scores are further refined by what choices that you make in terms of uh, the style of character that you want to build. And one of the things right off the bat that I love about this system, there are three aspects of this system that are determining how you are rounding out your character. There is an origin for your character, which is basically what branch of the military you may be associated with, or it could also be a civilian origin. You have a role, how you are specified in a particular military branch, and that is probably closest to what we would define as class for a D20 system. And I think that there are six classes, I want to say, in the game. Um, I selected Ranger for this particular character. And then there is a third one, and the third one is usually the one that you would do first. And I'm just going to pop open the rule book here because I can never remember what this, um, what this initial uh, thing is called. But I'm right here, and it is background. That's right, background. And so uh, a background could be, of course, you know, anything. It, it could be... Uh, it, it's most akin to what you would co uh, consider for like 5e things like um, artist or uh, renegade uh, or um, criminal or something like that. And each of these three components adds further customization, unique customization to your character. So you'll start off with 12 points in these essences, but that those numbers will change as you add additional bonuses from whatever role, origin, and background you select. Whatever number that you have in a particular essence, that number does two main things. One, it determines how many pips you put into improving your skills. So you can see the Joe that I created, Eco, is a ranger, and Eco has three pips of improvement in infiltration, and then I also spent a pip to give him a specialization in stealth. Now, this works in a way that you would probably expect it if you're familiar with role-playing games. Uh, to accomplish any skill task in an Essence 20 system, whether G.I. Joe or any of the other ones, you roll a d20, and then you roll the highest value of the skill that you have in it as a modifier. If you have a specialization and your specialization applies, instead of rolling just the highest die, you roll all these dice and select the highest value that you obtain on the three of them, for example, for infiltration. I very much prefer this in a D20 system because it makes skills so much more meaningful in this game than they are in a lot of other D20 systems. And it is a direct connection to uh, whatever your essence is for that, but you really have to figure out you will not have enough points to spend in, in all of these skills that are under speed essence, for example, at the start. The other big thing that your essence does is it adds to one of your five primary defenses in the game. And your five primary defenses are your toughness, which is 10 plus some modifiers that includes essence and armor. So the toughness of eco is 15. It adds to evasion for your speed. It adds to willpower for your smarts. It adds to cleverness for your social. And then uh, one other uh, defense that you have, let's see. And of course, I'm going to blank on it right now. Oh, and of course your health. Okay, it would be like a sort of like a fifth defense that your character has. And notice how my health is a small number. It's just three at level one. Because this is a D20 game that is focused on avoiding being hit rather than being hit and absorbing damage. And there are, of course, many ways to avoid taking damage or taking consequences. Um... And so health is that fifth way 
that you would deal with that. Okay. So that's the basics of skills. Now, where does leveling come in here? This is another thing that I like about Essence 20 that I hate about other D20 systems. In most other classic D20 systems, whether basic or second edition, especially my most hated 3 and 3.5, okay? And honestly, to some extent, 5th, okay? I am souring on 5th as time goes along, not because I don't want people to have fun with a role-playing game, but it just... Like, I understood the argument for 5th. I was supportive of the argument for 5th at the beginning. I do think that there is an argument for simplification. And simplification is seen in this system. There's four attributes, and those four attributes link to a series of skills that you got to put points in to improve. Okay? That's pretty simplistic. Now, unfortunately, other than with feats in 5e, the customization options, in my personal opinion, are not that great. This game is totally not like that at all. Okay, so I'm going to turn the page over. The biggest way that your character changes over the course as they level is by gaining new um, perks. Perks are one of the other primary ways that your character is differentiated from other characters. Leveling in this game is giving you essence improvements, and those essence improvements are linked to your role. So, for example, as a ranger at level one, I got two specific essence improvements, and then as you level up in ranger, you get additional essence improvements, sometimes only one, sometimes two. Whenever you get an essence improvement in this ga game, you get a skill point to spend. Okay, pretty straightforward. Perks also come in every single time that you level. And not only are there specific perks associated with your role, Ranger in this example, but there are also general perks that you can choose at particular levels as well. So this is a D20 system that is heavy on the options. So many different options. And as your character improves, yes, while it is true that there is numerical improvement, Unlike Dungeons and Dragons 3.5, for example, where the difference between a level one and a level 20 character is beyond ridiculous in terms of especially their numerical capabilities, but also in terms of the options that they have, Essence 20 is very much different in that there will be aspects of this character sheet that other than perhaps gear improvements and weapon improvements, which that's a whole other system that I love with this, you're not going to see some changes to certain areas of the character sheet at all. You will get more perks. Yes, you will get more essences and therefore higher defenses and higher skills, but it's not like this raw numerical number increase where at level 20 D&D, you're rolling a number and adding 20 to it, like in uh, 3.5 or like in uh, Star Wars Saga Edition, you know. Um, and so I'm all about options in role-playing games from a mechanics perspective perspective. Let's talk a little bit more about the options because the options do not end here. This game has a really deep weapon mechanic system. And I mean deep, not complex. I mean deep. There's a distinction between those. Okay. And so here's my weapon section right here. You may have noticed on the front of the character sheet that we see attack right here. And you might be wondering why I have nothing filled out in the attack box right here. This attack box in Essence 20 is specifying special attacks that you get as a result of roles or a focus within a role or something related to your origin, something like that. Okay, your standard weapon attacks are all filled up in this weapon section, and most characters' weapons sections are filled to the brim, even from level one. Because you'll notice here, for me, for a ranger, I have a close combat heavy blade, so I selected Machete, and 
these are all generalized weapon categories, and so they give you lots of different options of real-world weapons that would fit this type, which I think is really cool. I have an assault rifle. I picked an AK. Uh, and then you have unarmed, and then you have concussion grenade on mine. There would be additional weapons for other characters. You attack based upon your skills, of course. But one thing that I really like about this system is that you really have two options for a lot of these weapons right out of the gate. You can choose their primary effect or you can choose their alternate effect. And so a specific example here is that my heavy combat blade, my machete deals two sharp damage standard, or if I use it two handed, I can get three sharp damage out of it. And I mean, three sharp damage is a big deal. After all, my character, only has three health at the start. And every hero in this game from an ability called Yojo that everybody gets, gets plus one health right out of the gate. You can add additional health by investing in conditioning. Okay? So that's one example of an effect and an alternate effect. Here's another good example for unarmed. And this is probably, I really like this way of doing unarmed in a role-playing game. Any of you who have watched G.I. Joe the cartoon know that there's like this, um censored na nature to it. The comics are not like that at all. At all. Okay, people get killed in the comics all the time. But if you've ever watched the G.I. Joe cartoon, you'll note that there's laser blasts flying everywhere, and those laser blasts never hit anything but vehicles. <laughs> okay? Usually the tires. Anytime a aerial vehicle is destroyed in G.I. Joe the cartoon, they deliberately show the flyer of that vehicle parachuting down out of it, even though the vehicle's been destroyed, you know? Um, and, you know, that was essentially a censorship thing that happened for it. Um, I rewatched a couple of the episodes in preparation for running this game, and honestly, while it was ridiculous, it really wasn't that bad. Um, go watch a couple of them, okay? Like, I, I saw some intelligent writing for the characters, and I really like the characters a lot. Let's take a look at Unarmed, though. The standard effect for Unarmed in Essence 20 is that you do one stun damage to your enemy. And stun is a big deal. It prevents your enemy from acting, okay? Alternatively, if you want to do damage with Unarmed, you can do one blunt damage instead, but you take it as a step down on the skill ladder. And I'll talk about how the mechanics work out in addition to what I said with the, the skills here in a second, okay? And remember, this is just an overview, okay? That's a cool way of doing unarmed. I think that it levels the playing field of making unarmed uh, combat much more useful in an Essence 20 system than it is in many other role-playing games. It bakes the concept of su subdual damage in as the... How should I phrase it? as the standard rather than an exception that you kind of have to figure out, okay? And once again, I am all about options in a role-playing game. Now, two things that I want to mention before I explain how the dice shift ladder works and how the base mechanic works of the game, okay? And how this has been kind of modernized, okay? Uh, so I'm a ranger, so I get access to a pet, right out of the gate, and I'm really surprised at how detailed the pet creation system is in this game. Any character can have a pet, but they will usually have to spend extra for it, and the key feature for the ranger class is that the pet is baked into the class, okay? It's like the druid of the G.I. Joe role-playing game, okay? Uh, so I spent arguably... Only about half of the time that I spent building my actual character, I spent half that time building my pet, <laughs> okay? And there's so many different customization options. Excuse me, you can customize your pet's essences, you can, pes you can customize the commands that you can give your pet, you can customize, excuse me, your pet's skills and what they're particularly good at. 
the type of pet that you have, whether they're aerial or aquatic or land, there's so much customization involved with that. Hold on, we're not done. You can also build drones in this game. And you know, so G.I. Joe has always had like this far future technological bent to it, especially the cartoon anyway does. And uh, so you can customize a drone that you can have following you around in this game. Really cool, deep customization for the drones as well. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanic system now, because I think the mechanic system is another aspect of it that I think puts a spin on D20 that I like, okay? So I had to write words at the top of my character sheet here because you know how role-playing game jargon works, okay? We have advantage, we have disadvantage, we have bonus die, we have penalty die in Call of Cthulhu, and here in Essence 20, we have edges and snags. Okay, and an edge, frequently abilities will give you edges that instead of rolling 1d20, you roll 2d20 and you take the higher result. And sometimes you will have snags in which you will have to roll essentially at disadvantage or with a penalty die. Okay, so there is that modernized system baked into the Essence 20 system. In addition to that, and if we think back to what we had talked about with regards to skills down here and improving your skills... Whatever improvement you do to a skill in Essence 20 is your starting point for the dice shift ladder. And so the dice shift ladder works like dice shifts do in a lot of other role-playing games, where let's say if I'm starting at D6, depending upon modifiers, it might shift you up, it might shift you down, and depending upon what happens with those shifts, you can get an auto-success or a critical success without even rolling dice in this game. It would be really difficult to do it, and you would have to think really rapidly and creatively to make it happen, which is something that I like about this version of a D20 system. This version of a D20 system, Essence 20, rewards you for thinking creatively. This is not just raw mechanics. And in fact, one thing that I want to say about Essence 20 that I particularly like about it after having uh, actually ran an adventure with it uh, quick criticism, I think the difficulty classes for a lot of the skills in the adventure are a little bit on the high side for it, but that leads me into one thing that I like about this system. I think that they're on the high side because this is a system that is designed and... It, how should I phrase this? You need to cooperate in Essence 20. This is a teeming role-playing system. Most of the advantages that you are going to get in this role-playing game are going, uh, tactically anyway, for, for mechanics, are going to be based upon you using your skills and the dice ladder creatively, or you working together with your teammates. And I'll give you a, a immediate example. Uh, you know how like there's a classic aid another um, mechanic in most role-playing games. Aiding another in Essence 20 grants you an edge immediately. You immediately have advantage by working together with someone. You can get dice shifts by taking cover. You get two, your, your enemy, I should say, gets two dice shifts down if you have decent cover. This is another example of a role-playing game with just that one aspect of it that really moderates and improves the usefulness of unarmed combat in comparison to ranged combat. In other words, you are not, in my opinion, immediately at a disadvantage for going unarmed in this style of a role-playing system versus ranged, because it can be a challenge to hit a target at range. And I could very easily see myself having a ton of fun focusing on unarmed combatants in G.I. Joe, the role-playing game. So that's my little overview of the Essence 20 system. I think that this is, in my opinion, D20 done in the ways that I prefer. I want a D20 mechanic system like many other role-playing systems that is more focused on options and more focused on creative use of your options than it is just in getting raw numbers. And I'll compare Essence 20 to uh, like a crunchier version of basic role-playing, okay? 
is this far crunchier than basic role playing? Way crunchier than basic role playing. Okay. Um, but all of the added crunch is in deciding how you want to customize and deciding what all of your fun options are going to be as you play with your characters. And so, yeah, I, you know, I expect that there are going to be those of you in the audience who may have dismissed Essence 20 just out of hand, hearing that it was Hasbro, hearing that the properties that, that were attached to it were G.I. Joe and Transformers and Power Rangers. And to some extent that I, I get it, but check it out for yourself because I was incredibly pleasantly surprised by the Essence 20 system. And this is not the only video that I'm gonna do about Essence 20. Uh, we're gonna dive into the core rule book here uh, in a future video so that I can sort of take you through a little bit more of like what all the customization options are and all the choices that you have to build characters in the system. It, it's just really cool. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'm gonna be having more great role-playing videos coming at you on RPG Imaginings. Have a great day.